as you are aware certificates have a lifetime and uh, when they expire you got to renew it i got a question how certificate renewal happens on the data power and this video is exactly for that now remember that this video is focused on data power and uh, parts of this video you can use it in your other projects with other systems as well but in this video we are going to focus on data power only so let's tackle the topic of the certificate renewals certificate renewals i have tried to divide it in set of steps that uh, you can perform and uh, here are the uh, key steps for a certificate renewal so step one is to extract details from the existing cert we'll talk about it in a moment uh, step two is to generate a csr csr stands for uh, certificate signing request it is the key material um, in a sense that without it you will not be able to renew your certificate so in that sense it is one of the important materials step three is to upload the csr on a ca portal usually you got a ca uh, for example your organization might be affiliated with uh, godaddy or uh, it might be affiliated with google or maybe there are other well-known uh, certification authorities and uh, you your organization may be associated with one or more so this part uploading a csr on the ca portal is typically carried out by your uh, team managing relationship with the uh, ca it could be your infrastructure team or anyone <clears throat> but the idea is to upload csr on the ca portal uh, cas they validate your csr and uh, once validation is complete there are two ways in which they communicate the signed certificate to you one is over email another they give you an option to download the signed certificate from the ca portal every ca has a portal now uh, once you have downloaded the certificate you will typically have three certificates with it one is the leaf cert another one is in the intermediary and third one is the root cert uh, for a moment you can forget about the um, intermediary and root cert and uh, all that is required for you is to override the leaf certificate which is which typically expires in one to three year period of time so that is overriding the existing cert file now the last step um, which is safe to have is to disable enable the required certificate and key object in the data power if you follow step one to six carefully you will end up renewing your certificate on the data power so let's get started with the step one extracting details from the existing cert so as you can see here um, i have demonstrated it with the help of a certificate called icicibank.com and this is a screenshot of my browser which shows uh, the certificate viewer and you can see that i have highlighted the subject part of it a certificate has lots of different fields but you need not have to think about or focus on other different fields other than what i'm trying to tell you here so subject um, you can see the field values c n o l all these are important um, write them down so that is one second is the san which is subject alternative name not all certificates have it but many certificates have them and uh, if you forget to get the san then um, your renewed certificate uh, will not have that san and many of your in applications which which are trying to access your website they will for sure not work so how the field value is marked as non critical over here do not treat them non critical uh, treat treat them as critical okay so subject alternative names you have to uh, list them down you have to um, you have to make a note of them so assuming that these two pieces are done next is the csr generation part i'll tell you that there are two ways in which you can generate a csr the first one is using data power 
Another one is using OpenSSL. In Data Power, you have got a crypto tool. There are advantages and disadvantages of using this tool. A major advantage of using this tool is that it is easier to use. So you got a form here. You just fill the information uh, that you have picked up from previous file and you fill it up over here. So that is advantage number one. Advantage number two is that here you have an option that you can keep the public key same. Uh, by keeping the public key same, I mean that your existing certificate, which is expiring in a day or two, has a public key. Do you want the new certificate to have the same public key? You have an option. And that option is the last one that is mentioned here, using existing key object. So if you use this option, then you will end up having a uh, you will end up having a setup where you keep the public key same in many scenarios this is required in other scenarios this is not required so use it as as per your advantage the major disadvantage of using the data power crypto tool over here is that it does not have a place to put san that you saw previously so you don't have a field where you can put SAN, subject alternative names. Okay. So since you, ha since you ha don't have them, you will not be able to put that. And that is the biggest problem with the data power crypto tool. Now OpenSSL comes handy. In OpenSSL, so using OpenSSL has again advantages and disadvantages. The advantage part here is that whatever field values that you see th including the subject alternative name can be specified in OpenSSL. Now the commands that you see here they do not specify the subject alternative name but I'm sure that OpenSSL has a way in which you can specify the subject alternative name and that will get into the CSR. So that is OpenSSL benefit. The disadvantage of OpenSSL is that it is a command line tool. So you have to remember the entire command or you have to keep a note of the entire command, right? So that is one. Second, in OpenSSL, you cannot specify a public key while generating a CSR. So Every time when you generate a CSR, you will end up having a new public key private key pair. There is no way in OpenSSL to specify an existing public key while generating the CSR. So use tools as per your advantage. I'm just giving you an option here that these are the two popular options in which you using which you can generate the CSR. When you generate CSR with data power, you will find that CSR file inside the temporary folder of the data power. So if I go back to the data power here um, and uh, let's assume here I use crypto tool, I need to go to the file management inside the temporary. You can see there is a CSR. This I generated some times ago, but I'm um, just telling you that temporary folder will have the CSR. If you are careful, this folder will have your private key as well and it will give you an option to download it. You should download both these materials and delete them from the temporary folder. So that is important. And uh, once you have a CSR, then the next step is to upload the CSR on the target environment. So uh, usually vendors like Google or... Uh, um, Thoughte or VeriSign or uh, for that matter GoDaddy, they have their own website uh, and uh, they, they will have their own videos that can guide you how to upload the CSR and how to get this uh, signed certificate downloaded. Here in the next clip, which I have taken from GoDaddy, it shows how to upload the CSR on their, um, on their website. So uh, downloading the CSR is also simple. You will have to go to their website and there is an option to download that CSR.
certificates. Then click Setup next to the SSL certificate you are working with. On the Certificate Setup page, click Input a CSR. A drop-down will appear where you can paste the CSR you generated from your CPAM. Once pasted, click Continue. On the Proved Domain Console screen, leave all the selections at the default settings and click Continue. In the Additional Options screen, click to the link to read the subscriber agreement. Then check the box next to the Terms of Service to indicate that you have read and agreed the subscriber agreement and click Continue. In this demonstration, our SSL certificate and domain name are within the same GoDaddy account. Therefore, the validation step is completed automatically. This is indicated by a note under Complete Domain Control that says you don't need to do anything now. While the information you have entered is verified and your certificate is issued, you will see a page that displays the current status of your request. For more information about downloading and installing your certificate, check out our other videos on videos.godaddy.com. Now that you have the uh, certificate, you have downloaded the certificate from GoDaddy website or your CA website, uh, the idea is to install them on the data power. And installing them on the data power is very simple. Here is how you have to proceed. First, you type in crypto tools. Oh, here you have to type in crypto certificate now in in this video i have only one certificate but usually you will have several dozen certificate so you need to know which one of these certificates that you have you have to update now it may happen that there are many objects which are pointing to the same certificate file in that case, this is not your first place to do anything. Your first place to do, make a change would be to go to the file management, expand the cert or shared cert folder wherever your certificate is, click on actions, click on upload files, click on choose file, it will open you a a window here you can choose whatever file uh, whatever uh, certificate file you have and then ensure that override existing file is turned on and you need to upload it what it will do it is going to ensure that the existing file gets overridden here take an example of this file um, server certificate okay so let us assume that this is the certificate which you want to override then you need to ensure that the file that you have downloaded from uh, ca website it will have exactly the same name if not rename it and i'm only talking about the leaf cert you have to ignore the um, intermediary and the root search. Usually intermediary and root search have uh, the uh, lifetime of close to 10 years, 20 years or 30 years. So usually we don't uh, change them. If required, we can change them using the same procedure. But uh, normally the leaf certs get expired and this is the way you override the file. Uh, after overriding the file, you should you must look at the modification date it must change into the today's date when you are uploading it so once you have done these checks then you can safely assume that your uh, uh, new file has overridden the old file but uh, leaving it till here uh, may not work for you so Overriding the file is good, but then you will also have to go back to the crypto certificate, exp open the object, and then first disable it, apply, and then again enable it. This is a tried and tested technique which will ensure that there is no caching that is in play and your object references the new file and its content. 
once you are done your certificate update process is complete indeed